everyone, and welcome to our series, Jesus Now More Than Ever. Whether you're a visitor or a member in Barbados, another Caribbean country, or further afield, we are so glad to welcome you tonight. Our presentation will be about world signs you can't ignore, which promises to be exciting. Another exciting presentation will be happening tomorrow night, how to respond to God's love. We hope and pray that you'll join us again tomorrow. As we begin tonight, let us bow our heads and pray. Dear God, we're so thankful you've taken us safely through this day. We're thankful that we're here and we can listen and hear a message from you. Lord, you know each person who's listening tonight and their families and their situations, and I pray that your hand will touch each one of them. I ask as we listen that your Holy Spirit will communicate with our hearts let us hear the message you have for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good evening and welcome to our I hope you have an amazing day. And even if you did not, this is the part of our program where we praise and give God thanks for all He has done for us. We're going to make use of the hymn number 317. 
Lord, I lift your name on her. We're inviting you to clap along, get a, a little sweet as we sing and praise God through this song. signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity the sea and the waves warring men's heart failing them for fear 
and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Father, indeed, tonight we come before your throne of grace that we indeed can obtain mercy in our time of need. Father, there's nothing good in us, but we recognize that we need you now more than ever. That's why in no other name than your Son, Jesus Christ, we approach your throne of grace, that you indeed have mercy upon us, that you will forgive our sins, that you indeed will heal our land. Father, tonight, dear Father, there's so many perplexities and difficulties, so many challenges that we're all facing. But I pray in a special way to God that we indeed tonight can look up and know that our redemption drives nigh. We can look to you, dear Father, the author and finisher of our faith, that we can indeed hold on to you, your unchanging hand. Your word says that though I walk through, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil. So tonight, dear God, we pray on behalf of your people gathered tonight that you have mercy, dear Father, upon us, forgive us our sins. That you indeed continue to provide for us and that you will touch our families, our, our members, uh, all those in our communities. That we indeed will look to you, dear Father, and have a true revival, dear God. A, re a true reformation, dear Father, that we can return to our primitive godliness. Help us, dear God, realize that these things in this world, they're fading. They disappear fast, but the word of God will stand forever. So, Father, tonight we put tonight's speaker in your hand. Indeed, may we have a word from on high that will revive our souls. That will click in our minds and may our answer and our reply be yes, Lord. We will follow you. Bless us and your God, and may you take full control. Say your Holy Spirit to revive us again. Is our prayer with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus said, here I stand, won't you please let me in? And you said, I will tomorrow. Jesus said, I am he who supplies all your needs. And you said, I know, but tomorrow, tomorrow, I'll give my life tomorrow, I thought about today, but it's so much easier to say. You better choose the Lord today for tomorrow. Very well might be too late. Jesus said, here I stand. Won't you please take my hand? And you said, I will tomorrow. Jesus said, I am he who supplies all your needs. And you said, I know, but tomorrow. Today, oh, but 
is so much easier to say tomorrow who oh, promise you tomorrow you better choose the lord today for tomorrow very well might be too late and who said that tomorrow would ever come for you still you laugh and play and continue on to Forget about tomorrow Won't you give your life today Oh, please Don't just turn and walk away Tomorrow Tomorrow is not promised Don't let this moment slip Good evening, church. Give and it will come back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Friends and family, we can give of our monies, our time, our talents and our resources. Whatever we give, God is willing to use them. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to give you thanks for your loving kindness and your mercies. Lord, I ask that you would continue to bless the monies that we would give tonight, bless our talents, our resources, and our time that we use, Heavenly Father, to share your word with our friends and our families. I ask that you will continue to bless each and every household represented to here tonight and continue, Heavenly Father, to allow us to be able to give however we can to further in your kingdom is my prayer. For Christ's sake, amen. You now have our theme song, Jesus Now More Than Ever.
the church say amen. And we just want to say thanks to our costers for reminding us one more time that if there was ever a time we need the Lord, it is now. I understand as we get ready to go into this lockdown, um, it's a time when we will need to come a little closer to Jesus. I understand that there are going to be many needs that will need to be met. I'm sure there are going to be persons who will discover they're ill. There are persons who will have other challenges. And as we pray for ourselves during this period of time, we, we want to remember our nation, we want to remember our world, because there are people who are in great straits, even as we speak at this time. Tonight, we want to move on with our presentations. And um, as we indicated, you know, we thought we should begin by laying a solid foundation with prayer. And we try to emphasize the importance of prayer on um, Sabbath, um, not just pray, but we want to learn to pray like Jesus, to trust his heavenly father, just like he trusted him. And that's why on Monday, on the, um, Sunday night, we took some time to emphasize the importance of faith. Once you begin to pray, you need faith. We need to trust the one who we are talking to. And that's why last night we took some time to look at his love of his love for us. Uh, we took time to try to understand not only how much he loves us, but how we need to respond um, to that great love that he shows to us every day. Um, tonight, we are looking at another important topic, um, science we can't ignore. And tonight, my emphasis is preparation. It's the signs are there to give us indications as to where we are and where we're going, but we need some divine guidance. So tonight, we want to put some emphasis on the word of God. If there's going to be a revival, there has to be a lot of prayer. There has to be a lot of faith. There has to be strong relationship with this God we love and serve. And we must get to know him through his word. We're going to open up the screen as we try to share and do what we do each night. <clears throat> so that even if you missed anything, you can always go back and um, take some time and um, follow through. The texts are there, the quotations um, that we share, they're all there so as to keep you in touch and keep you reviving um, and revisiting the things we will speak from night to night. So tonight our topic, one that is very familiar, I think you've heard probably many preachers um, take time to emphasize the importance of this topic. World signs you and I can't ignore. As we go to the Bible tonight, we want to go right to the book of, of Matthew. I'm sorry, that's Matthew chapter 24. You put that for in for me, please. And verse three. <clears throat> you know, one day as Jesus sat with the disciples on Mount of Olives, um, he was talking to them about the temple and things that were to come to pass um, in the not distant future as far as Jerusalem was concerned. And the disciples, after they listened well, they were concerned. And they asked the master to share some information with them about two things. They wanted to know when his second coming will be. And they also wanted to know what were the signs, you know, that would not only tell them when his second coming was near, but they also wanted signs from the master that will help them to know when the end of this world, you know, will be. After Jesus heard their cry, he took time in the Matthew chapter 24, also you find the text in Luke 21, sharing with them predicting the future 
all the things that will happen the, uh, before the fall of Jerusalem and before his second coming and the destruction of this world. And I understand we should take some time to read these prophecies. In Luke 21, 25, he told them, listen, there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth there's going to be distress of nations with, per with perplexity. Like this pandemic we're now seeing, these are all the signs. And we understand as we look across this globe, huh? what we are seeing is not the end. There's more trouble. This pandemic <clears throat> is like the tip of the iceberg. But I think it's like God giving us a dry run, helping us to understand the kind of challenging times that we have up ahead of us. And he says that I'm going to, I'm telling you these things so that when they begin to come to pass, you might believe. In other words, we were forewarned. And God is saying to us tonight, you see all these signs that I give coming to pass. He's saying to us, take them seriously. The servant Lord and testimonies um, to the church, volume six. She makes the point how frequently we have hurricanes earthquakes and tornadoes of destruction by fire and flood with the great loss of life and poverty. I understand we listen to the news right in our own region. We see all of these things taking place. And tonight, what I gather from all Jesus tried to teach his first disciples and what he's trying to teach us now He's saying that these are not ordinary times. We just cannot go on taking life for granted. Some important things are about to take place on this planet. And the thing that I understand is very important is the fact that they are telling us um, about something that is about to take place on our planet and that is Jesus is coming soon, very, very soon. Tonight, I understand what he said to his disciples in Luke 21, 26. He says that men's hearts will be filling them for fear, looking after these things which are coming on the earth. He says the very powers of heaven shall be shaken. The powers on earth will be shaken. But tonight, I've come to share good news. And the good news is that my God, I'm sorry about that, but we just lost our power, but we got it back. <laughs> so, you know, like I said, we're in the midst of a great controversy. And I believe these are moments when the enemy gets pretty angry, but we will proceed and we will win this battle. We will win this war in Jesus' name. The Bible makes it clear, as we pointed out in the earlier text, that we are at a time when men's hearts will be failing them for fear. But all of these things that are, you know, happening around us are helping us to understand some very important good news. I thought I'd just summarize quickly a few more of those signs um, that the Bible and the Spirit of Prophecy Council speak to. Um, let's take that closer look. And we understand we are at a time when there is unprecedented, uh, you know, accidents and natural disasters right across the globe with mass casualties. But there's more going on. There's sickness, there's death, there's grief. I mean, Sometimes you wonder where we will find answers. There's the legalization of gay marriages. We have communities all around us that are infested with crime and drugs. We have never seen anything like we have seen, you know, in all island now in years past. So much kind of violence. We have the global economic downturn. We have a world that's become very secular, a generation that loves pleasure more than it loves the Lord. We 
have cultural confusion, secret societies, deceive and confuse people, deceive and confuse churches. We have the revival of the Roman Catholic Church. We see the strengthening of the ecumenical movement. And I understand there's more. The Servant Lord reminds us more and more at this point in time, the claims of God are being set up now. The law of God is being replaced by the laws of men. The exaltation by merely human authority of Sunday in place of the Bible Sabbath, she said that's the last straw. You know, the trouble is ahead of us. These work conditions obviously are telling us with without any kind of uncertainty that Jesus is coming soon. And the Bible cautions every child of God tonight. And that's why we're having a revival. When these things begin to come to pass, the Bible says we must look up. We must lift up our heads for our redemption draweth nigh. The moment is near. And I always say to my friends and to those we have to witness to, listen, even if Jesus doesn't come in the next thousand years, the reality is that I know that I'm here for a little while. Uh, once upon a time we said today we're here, tomorrow we're gone. Sometimes we're here today and we're gone today. I understand, brothers and sisters, from all that I've seen, uh, um, that we need to be ready for the coming of Jesus Christ every moment of every day. We need to wake up in the morning and look into the skies. We need to wake up knowing that all is well between us and him. And that's why the Bible says this is now. When you see the signs, don't dance around, but look up. And when it says look up, it doesn't mean go down to bridge down and steer. It says we must look to Jesus. And that's why Peter tried to put some emphasis here. He says, sin then that all these things shall be dissolved. All these prophecies are going to be fulfilled. He asked the question and give the answer. What man of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? And he continues, brethren, that's why we have the revival. He says, wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, we be telling people the coming is near. He said, be diligent so that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. So what I'm gathering from the scriptures is that there's a thorough work that has to be done in us through the blood of Christ. What I understand from all that I study, if there was ever a time we need a revival, is now. And the revival is a very personal thing. I must be revived. I cannot revive my wife. I cannot revive myself. We all need to look to God for the, the cleansing we need, for the infilling of his spirit. And that's why I say to every believing saint and every friend who is sharing with us tonight, look, I understand this world keeps us busy, but you've got to spend time paying attention to your relationship with your best friend, that's Jesus Christ. That's why John emphasizes the point in 1 John 3 and verse 3. He says, every man that has this open him, every man that has this confidence in the second coming of Christ and all the wonderful things he plans to do for us, he says, we must purify ourselves even as he is pure. In other words, John is saying, we must go for help. We must open up our lives to Christ. We must understand how we can get the help we need. John's point, you know, is that just before the second coming of Jesus Christ, um, uh, this time should be used just as uh, the ancient Israel used the day of atonement in Old Testament times. I understand uh, you know, there was this day when the sanctuary was cleansed uh, once every year. When the high priest went into the Holy of Holies, God said, that day is not a day. Don't go to work. This is a Sabbath. And he told them, make sure that you stay in your place. It's a time to afflict
anoint your souls is the time to make sure that when the high priest completes that work in that holy of holies, that your sins are forgiven. Those who did not cooperate were cut off. Listen, brethren, I'm here to let you know tonight that my Jesus, our high priest, is in the holy of holies doing that same work of cleansing. He is making atonement for us. You remember in John Revelation chapter 7, God gave the angels who had the authority to destroy this earth. He told them, hold back the winds of strife because he understood that his people were not ready for what he was doing. But he told them to hold back the winds of strife so that I can give my people a chance to be seen. I want to see my people. Christ wants to see his church. And he said to us, I'm, I'm holding back because if the enemy had his way, the commotion and the strife on this earth would be so great, we wouldn't have time to get ready for anything. But God has tempered things down a bit. Says, I'm giving you this respite so that you can spend some quality time with me and make sure that revival comes to your life and to your house. The seriousness of the times in which we live, brethren and sisters, demand that we pay attention to the studying and the practicing of God's word. I don't know if I can say that better. If, if revival is going to take place, the word of God must become important. And I understand what John meant when he said in John 5, 39, he says, search the scriptures. You, you, you just can't wait until you come to church to hear another sermon. You know, you've got to search the scriptures. This morning, a member called me about 5.30 because she's reading and something she never understood. And she's asking pastor to explain this to me. I believe we got to search. And God said, I'm going to send my spirit to guide you into all truth. You know, search, read the word, read the word, read the word. And as you read, God is going to talk to you through his word and show you how to prepare. I understand in 2021, in this revival mode that we're in, the word of God is to be our spiritual food. Somebody say amen. Jesus himself declares in John 6, 35, he says, I am the bread of life. And um, in verse 51 of that same book, he says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, somebody say amen. He says he shall live forever. And he said, the bread that I will give is my flesh. Huh? His flesh. That's what he did when he went to Calvary's cross. He gave his life. He died so that today we can have eternal life so that we can live the, the 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 life that he wants us to live i love the way the psalmist put this he says man once we open up our minds and let the word of god come in it's going to give us understanding you don't have to go to theology school you don't have to go to usc you don't have to go to ncu you just need to come to jesus you you don't have to be some scholar I understand uh, that once we get into the word, read the word, read the word. And as we read and study, my God sends the spirit to guide us and to make that word powerful in our lives. I'm saying to you tonight, friends, the same God who through his word created us in the likeness of his image. Come on. It's the same God who is able to save us, who is able to heal us who is able to transform us, who is able to revive us, who is able to recreate, recreate us in his own image by the power of that same word. So listen, the word of God must be central in this revival package. Second Timothy 3, 16 tells us that the word of God is profitable for doctrine, you know, with all these strange theories and things that's going wrong, we need to be well indoctrinated. And the word of God is there to teach us. 
so that when people come to us with all these strange things that I hear around the place right now, we will not be deceived. The word of God is profitable for reproof. Sometimes we feel right and righteous, but we need to be corrected and God sends his spirit to reprove us. God sends his word to reprove us. Sometimes we need correction. Come on, children. The Bible says there's a way that seems right to a man, by the end, the way of death. God says, I'm sending my word to instruct you in righteousness so that daily you can stay on the path of righteousness. They must, they, listen, this is a time when we can't afford to backslide. There's a time when we can't afford to give up on our salvation. There's a time, brethren, when we need uh, to be steady in our walk. And verse 17 tells us once we let the word of God do its work in us, the man of God will become perfect. Uh, the man of God is going to be prepared. Uh, not only for the second coming, but God prepares us to live a good life, to do good works, to glorify God, to be a blessing to our neighbors and friends and all those around us. I'm putting some emphasis on the word tonight. Because without the word of God, there will be no revival. Uh, let me go back over a text I started emphasizing earlier this week. Isaiah 55 uses an operation in nature to help us to understand how this word works. It says, For the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth. God says, And make of it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. That's what the rain does. I remember um, in John 4 and 15, um, the Bible makes it clear. God says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and I have ordained you and sent you forth to bear fruit. Listen, friend, uh, our lives will only be fruitful when it is guided and touched and empowered uh, by the word of God. Isaiah continues though in verse 11, he says, listen, tell us that the wind comes down and waters the soil and make it fruitful. He says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. Come on children. But it shall accomplish that which I please. It shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. I thought, this is so powerful, huh? It's the word of God. God says, bear fruit. And it's the word of God that's going to make that fruitage possible. I understand that the earth can bring forth vegetation only because of the moisture that comes upon it by the rain and the snow that comes down from heaven. Without the rain, I think we know this. This is practical stuff. Every living plant on this planet would wither and die. Similarly, brethren, with the life of man and the word of God. We're saying to you tonight that without the word of God, without God's word, the life of man is as barren of power and goodness as is the earth without rain. Come on, children. I hope we get to understand what God is trying to get into our minds tonight. And I understand why the devil do not like to see Christians studying. I understand why the devil will prevent you from studying your Sabbath school lesson. Um, at this time, it's a little more challenging, but you have to spend more time. I discovered the Sabbath school lesson right now. Um, you have to do more reading, you know, more text. Um, I understand taking up the Bible and spending time each day reading some portion of it. Man, these are disciplines that the enemy tried to keep far from us. But after this revival, we got to sturdy up. Somebody say amen. Now, I'm saying to you, when we refuse to study and live according to the word of God, we will experience spiritual drought. In the natural world, there is drought when the rain don't fall. And in times of spiritual drought, brethren, the devil will take over. And when the devil takes over, the flesh rules. So sometimes you see Christians 
I mean struggling with sin, struggling with all kinds of things. And many times it's because we are disconnected. Galatians 5.19 tells us, once that drought comes to your life, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery and fornication, you name it, saints. It's all out there. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, and heresies, envyings, and I wish I could say these things were outside the walls of the church, but they come right into the church. And God make it, makes the point that they which do these things shall not inherit his kingdom. To me, that is serious. If you go into the book of Romans, um, Roman Paul makes the same point. Because men refuse to retain the word of God in their minds. Be be because they refuse to keep close to the only power on earth that can keep us safe and get us ready for the coming of Christ. Said God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all these things, the unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, envy, murder, debate, deceit. These are things that comes right into God's church. But biters, haters of God, people who are proud and full of boastings, uh, people who do wrong things, children who won't respect their parents. These are the things that are happening in the world and in the church. You know, people who are without understanding, covenant breakers, you, you go to the altar, you marry somebody, and then you cancel the marriage. You know, without natural affection, you know, the kind of things that we do to one another doesn't make sense. And Paul says that even though we know the judgment of God will come on those who do these things, he says that even though we know that those who do these things are worthy of death, not only do we do them, but have pleasure in them that do them. And it's because the spirit of God is not guiding you. It's because the flesh is in charge. And tonight we want to put that flesh to rest. In the natural world, the Bible tells us in times of drought, the day the first shower comes down, everything turns green. Isn't that true, saints? Sometimes we're around here and the rain and everybody's complaining. And you're using the other water to water the plants, but they wouldn't grow. But the first shower of rain that comes down, Barbados turns green. And that's the way it is. In terms of spiritual drought, uh, the day the word of God falls upon the unsanctified human heart, as the showers upon the parcher, spiritual life springs forth. Somebody say amen. And just like the grass turns green after that first shower, so the life that is touched by the power of God's word will spring forth fresh and beautiful in the joy and the peace of the Lord. Listen, saints, we can be happier. We can have a fuller life if we would just give God's word a chance in our homes, in our lives, what changes you will see in our marriages, in our relationship with our children, but we must live according to the principles of the Bible. When God's word is allowed to accomplish in our lives, that which it pleases God to accomplish, it will re not return uh, unto him void. Uh, our lives will be transformed. I understand the life that was barren and filled with anger and hatred, thank God is now filled with peace and love. The life that was filled with unhappiness, thank God tonight can be filled with joy. The life that was filled with selfishness can become a life filled with benevolence and that caring spirit that we need in the body of Christ. Life that was once filled with pride and arrogance all about you can be changed to a life that's filled with humility. The life that was once filled with fear and anxiety can, can, can tonight, tomorrow, be filled with calmness and confidence. Let my church say amen. There's hope though. The Civil Lord tells us that Jesus selected uh, his disciples. 
and, and, and the school one makes the point, huh? and the Bible emphasizes this, all the disciples have serious faults. So don't feel bad tonight because there are weaknesses in your life. Don't feel bad tonight because you're not perfect. All the disciples have serious faults when Jesus called them. Many of us got baptized with serious faults. But thank God it's time to be revived. John and his brother, remember these guys? Were called the sons of thunder. And we're told that while these guys were with Jesus, huh? Any slight showed, um, shown to, to their master. Man, were roused deep indignation in these gentlemen. They were combative. They had evil tempers. She, the civil law makes a point they were filled with revenge. And we saw it, you know, when the Samaritans didn't allow Jesus what he wanted. You heard John say, my let's call them some fire from heaven and burn them up. You know, they were like that. The spirit of criticism was there. They were like all of us. Huh? Um, I, I remember John, he, he, he eventually become known as the beloved disciple. He was that way when he first came, but thank God we saw what happened to his life because he allowed the word of God to take control. We are told day by day in contrast with his own violent spirit, he beheld the tenderness and the forbearance of Jesus. He heard the lessons of humility and patience. He opened his heart to the divine influence of his master. And listen, friend, what a change. J James became not just a listener, but a doer of the Savior's words. Tonight, that's what I'm here to talk about. I'm saying it's wanting to come and repeat the theology and go to the Sabbath school lesson and listen to the sermons and all of that. I'm saying, friend, we have to practice the word. We got to be a doer of the word. Uh, self must be hidden, Christ. And that was what John experienced. He learned to wear the yoke of Christ. Uh, he learned a lesson that all of us need to learn tonight. We're told that Jesus had to reprove these disciples, call them out when they were wrong. He warned and cautioned them. But John and his brethren did not give up on the master. They did not leave him. They chose Jesus, notwithstanding the, re the reproofs they got from him. And I love this other part. The Savior did not withdraw from them because of their weaknesses. And tonight I'm here to say to you and to myself, listen, man, you have weakness, but my God has strength. You have some strange attitude, but my God has the right attitude towards all of us. We told those guys continue to the end. And I understand that we too must continue to the end. I understand they continue to the end to share his trials, to learn the lessons of his life. By beholding Christ, those brothers became transformed in character. And I've come to tell us tonight, we too need that transformation this week. John makes it clear it's the spirit that quick enough, the flesh profit of nothing. Jesus makes the point to his servant John. He says, the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and their life. The word of God is real, it's powerful. It has life in it. Huh? The Bible tells us once we accept the word, once we accept the spirit that's in the word, the fruit of the spirit will be manifest. Where there was all this anger and bitterness and hatred and you name it, huh? The Bible says there's no love and joy and peace and long suffering and gentleness and goodness and faith and meekness and temperance. The Bible says against such there is no law. Tonight, friends, I've come to remind us that it is the word of God that shall accomplish that which it pleases God to accomplish in each of us. The reason why so many Christians make no greater advancement in their spiritual life is because they interpret the will of God to be just what they feel like doing. 
and while following their own desires, while doing their own thing, they flatter themselves that they're conforming to God's will. Listen, those who take this approach, huh? you're not going to have any conflict with you. You're not going to feel guilty about anything. Why? Because the word of God is pushed aside. Once you put God's word aside, you are on a dangerous path. And that is why there's so much conflict and division and confusion in the world. So much of the same in the church. So much of the same in our families. Huh? And, and wherever human beings are, once this evil spirit takes control and once the word of God is put aside, then the conflict, the, the anger, the bitterness, the fights, marriages breaking up, families being separated, we tonight do not have to be a victim of this kind of lifestyle. God wants to give us change. You must always keep in mind, we're not a try to do what in our own strength, what needs to be done. Must must let the word of God itself do the will of God in us. Not by might. Repeat this text all the time. Nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts, will we be able to gain the victory over all these besetting weaknesses that we have to deal with day by day. Tonight, my God is pleading with us to open our hearts to his word, to accept the word, this word that we've been talking about and studying. We have to accept the word as the living word of God, full of truth and power. We have to be obedient, brethren, to his requirements. Once you find the light, you have to live according to the light. We are to claim as our very own, brethren, during this time of revival, the promises found in the word of God. For well, you understand the power we need to transform our lives is wrapped up in each promise that my God has given. Once this is done, brethren, the word is going to accomplish the will of God in us. In Colossians 3.16, the apostle counsels us to let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. So we've got to take time to study and to memorize and to keep this word. Just remember as we go through this revival experience, you cannot change yourself. The question was asked, can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leopard his spots? Then may he do good who have been accustomed to doing evil all your life. Tonight, God wants to remind you, friend, you can't save yourself. I understand it's by the grace of God, huh? through faith in the living and spoken word, uh, and that not of ourselves. Uh, salvation is a gift that comes to us from God. Remember, friends, as we go through revival week, through revival season, you cannot keep yourself from falling. If you think you're strong, try it. I saw strong men crumble. And I understand that tonight, we don't have to crumble. Jude 24 reminds us, not unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory for exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Let the word, let, let the people of God say amen. Tonight, I've come to emphasize the fact that the word of God is alive. The word of God is filled, is filled with power. And when it's allowed to work in our lives, we're going to experience a mirac miraculous changes. We are going to experience joy. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. Thank God all things are passed away. 
and all things can become new. Word of God's a life, friends, is full of power. And when it is allowed to work in our lives, we are going to experience a miraculous victory of victories. And I think that's what we're all aiming for tonight. John said, and I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire. And them that had gone to victory over the beast and over his image and over every wicked thing the devil put in their way. Bible says they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb saying, I pray God that you and I and every one of us will be in this choir. They were able to sing, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. I'm saying to you tonight, once the word is allowed to transform our lives, victory is sure. Revival is sure. Listen, I understand we are in trying times, but once the word of God is allowed to transform our lives, we are in good company. We can go through the tough times knowing that God is with us. And when we come to that next mountain, we know that he will get us to it or get us over it. When that enemy comes to really beat us down, like Jesus in the wilderness, we can say, get thee behind me, Satan, and quote the word. Jesus quote the scripture, man shall not live by bread alone. And tonight, that word is true. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Dear Jesus, we thank you for bringing us to this fountain of life tonight. Tonight, Lord, we try to emphasize the importance of your holy word. Lord, this is a sacred trust. This is some a very special gift that you have given to us. Lord, the enemy tries to take it away, try to prevent us from getting into it, try to prevent us from having real Bible study, try to prevent us from having real devotional time with you. But there, Lord, we are in revival mood. And I'm praying tonight that you will help everyone on this platform to make a covenant right now that each day of our lives starting today, we're going to make sure that we take some quality time to spend with Jesus and his word. And you understand, once we are willing, Jesus says, I know the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. But God says, I'm here to give you strength. I'm here to make possible the impossible. Because I understand his one desire tonight is not only to see every one of us revived, but he wants us to be ready to meet him when he comes the second time. May God bless us to this end. Forgive us one more time for failures as, as it relates to this matter. And help, Lord, that as we covenant, we'll also look around us for brethren who are struggling. Lord, look into our homes and see our children and spouses who are struggling. Help us to go home, Lord, and encourage them. Let us get back to the book. Let us get back to our knees. Let's get back to Jesus so that revival can become a real experience even at this point in time as we go through the lockdown. Lord, we're, we're, we're not moving like we used to. Most of us are going to have more time at home. I pray to God that this lockdown time will give us more time for revival activities, more time to pray, more time to study, more time to share. And these blessings, dear God, we claim tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for giving us back the power. Thank you, Lord, for preventing the enemy from taking this service out completely. And these blessings, dear God, we give, we claim in Jesus' name. Amen.
will bring our service to a close with the use of the theme song, Onward Bound. <laughs> thank you for this opportunity that we can be able to participate in this virtual evangelistic program. We thank you for those members who have tuned in with us this night along with all of our visiting friends. Help their God that as the sermon was put forward by Pastor Beckles, that souls would have been touched, their God. That indeed the message as it was clear that everyone within hearing, that they are able to make the decision indeed to find, to, to seek thee and indeed to choose you as their Lord and Savior. We know that these are the last days we are living in and we want to thank you dear God for being by our side even amidst this COVID-19 pandemic. Help dear God that we will continue to trust thee. And regardless of what comes our way, that we will allow you to do the impossible. And that day, God, when life for us is no more, that we will be found worthy to be part of your eternal kingdom. We know that in the late last days that signs will come that will point, day God, to your soon return. Help us to hold on to thee, knowing for certainty that you are indeed the author and finisher of our faith. And help us to be prepared that when you come, that we will be part of your eternal kingdom. We thank you and we praise your name. And as we continue to attend these services night after night, may we be blessed and may we encourage others to come and also be blessed. We thank you for hearing and answering our prayer for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. Thank you.